pole, a Sanders pole, painter's pole, doesn't matter what it is. You might have a martial arts long staff. You could have the Japanese bow, which is what I have here, Korean jongbong. I also have that here, or the Chinese gun. Doesn't matter, whatever you have is the right thing for you to start with. You just need a long stick. Start to spin it from side to side. You're gonna start to get blood in the joint. You wanna warm up the hand. Stay safe from injury during this workout. 30 seconds per hand. It's about 30 seconds here on my right. I'm gonna put it into the left and then just go back and forth. So you're just going slow, easy at the beginning. This is a little bit heavier staff. This is a white oak staff. You can see all the different options available in the store below. That's the second link. But I'm just going side to side. I recommend starting with something lighter first, like rattan, but I just felt like having a hard workout today. So I grabbed this oak. So you're going side to side. Red oak is also good. From here, you go one and two. Welcome Germany. Welcome everybody who's joining me right now. You're going side to side, hand to hand. We're going to talk both about spinning and striking today. Maybe a little bit of blocking. Palms up. But I like to do the basics. I want to teach you how to use your bow for self-defense. Learn, learn how to use a stick, a long stick, which gives you the advantage of reach. This person has a knife. That's my threat. He's got a knife in his hand. It's this long, right? I've got this huge reach advantage. I can defend myself. You're going to be able to defend yourself very well with basic bow strikes. We're going to go over those today. Learn how to use your martial arts long staff when you do bow staff training at home. Always start with the spins. That's a good way to get your body warmed up. Lubricate the joints, learn how the staff moves in space and time, but it's not necessarily self-defense itself. It just makes you better at self-defense. You're gonna learn how to strike today too in practical ways, how to stop somebody from hurting you when you have your bow staff in your hand. Whether it's multiple attackers, somebody with a knife, a bigger opponent, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna have this reach advantage. You're gonna have a big stick. Now, after you've done this from side to side, I want you to start to go over the top of one hand and bring it into the other hand. Now, see how my palms are facing away from each other? Thumb is touching the pinky here. We're gonna call this the butterfly spin. We're gonna call it butterfly spin because that's what everybody else calls it. I didn't make that up. But you're gonna start with one hand on top, the other hand below it. See how my wrists come together? The top hand, this is my right hand, is just going to turn palm down. Palm down and palm away. That's kind of like that warm-up you did. But the other hand is going to be here. You're going to pull it in and out of the way as you turn it down. And then it's going to come back and turn under. And you're going to take it. And this hand is going to pull out so you can spin it, palm up. And when you do that, it's going to come into your hand again. Got to stop from breaking the camera. Turning it here into here. Hazel, hazelnut, I'm not sure about hazelnut. It's a very expensive wood here in the States. Maybe hazelnut's a little bit more uh, common in Germany. After all, you do have all that good hazelnut cream inside your chocolates. What's that stuff everybody spreads on their waffle now? Nutella, Nutella. All right, this is just turning down. This hand is turning over. This is called a butterfly spin. You're gonna do this to build strength in the grip, strength in the hands, and then you're gonna go the other way. Yeah, t t uh, use it. Whatever you have is the right thing to use. Grab yourself some wood. I don't care if it's hazelnut, birch, uh, white wax wood, Whatever it is, doesn't matter. It can even be bamboo. There's nothing wrong. There's, it can even be a cardboard, one of those things that go inside the wrapping paper. You have some leftover from Christmas or something. Doesn't matter. Get started. Don't wait to start. Don't let anybody tell you you don't have the right equipment. And as I always say, invest your time before you invest your money. All I'm doing here is just turning this up. This is my left hand. My right hand stays on top, but it's out of the way out of the way it comes up and then it shoots in it's going to take it and i'm rolling it into the bottom hand now but that's why we call it the butterfly the thumbs are coming together the fingers are out like that from here i pull that out of the way 
turn it all the way here, and then I'm just gonna reach in, grab it, getting a cramp in that forearm. Years ago, about eight years ago, I was bending nails and tearing phone books. You can't tear phone books anymore, they're too, too thin and they don't make them out of the right kind of paper. But back then I was trying to roll up rolling pans or frying pans. It was just a fun thing, a way to distract my busy mind. And I was also doing thousands of push-ups a day and hundreds of pull-ups. And I went to bend this 10 penny nail, the, the big one, and you have to make a fast. And I popped this uh, uh, in my neck. It's that first vertebra and it just pinched the nerve. I didn't know that's what it was. And everything went dead for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks until finally this uh, gifted physical therapist said, I know what that is, let me fix it. Put me on the floor. He was one of my students, he's a doctor of physical therapy. Runs a university program. Anyway, he fixed it, but by then it was too late. I had already caused nerve damage. So now from time to time, if I squeeze that too hard and I hold it too hard, I get it locks up on me. All right, put it in the right hand. You're gonna start into a figure eight, going side to side. I never did bend that nail. I bent it like a little bit and I never got it bent all the way. The 10 penny nail, and actually I don't think it was a 10 penny nail, I was trying to bend a big bolt, a fastener. It was a bigger than a 10 penny nail. But I probably bent, I don't know, two, 300 nails every month practicing. I used to have just buckets of them all over my office. All different size nails and screws. Bring it to here. It's a nice test of your grip. Go from side to side. All you're doing here is carving that sideways figure eight. One day I'm gonna write down all the ways I've harmed myself doing dumb stuff like that. Now it's not dumb, I wanted to see if I could do it. Other people can do it, I wanna see if I can do it. I'm just like that. You know, if you, I never, and, and I want you to adopt this philosophy too. If you see something really cool that somebody can do, or something that you think is cool, doesn't matter if anybody else thinks it's cool or not, Anything that you see anybody else can do, you can do. You just have to learn it the right way for you. Now you're gonna go hand to hand, and then you have to train and keep training and never give up. And keep asking questions. Keep asking questions. You're gonna come here. Neck rolls, we can do neck rolls. We're going side to side. Neck rolls in the front, neck rolls in the back. Let's get the, ba the basics in first. Go hand to hand. Somebody asked for neck rolls. That's where that comes from. This is gonna get your heart rate up. And I'm just standing with my feet under my body. I'm not, I don't have one foot in front of the other. I'm trying to avoid this bag. But I can put this right foot forward and my body is gonna be a little bit smaller. It's gonna be a little bit easier to bring it around from one side to the other. You can start to switch your feet, you can take a few steps forward, a few steps back, start to get your heart rate up, make it more of a cardiovascular workout. So you're leaning out your body while you're improving your handling technique. Then in this hand pull, you can use two staffs at once. There are, uh, there, there are some people on, who do like competition or tournament style, flashy style, two staff fighting, but it's really inefficient. And just like with nunchucks, nunchucks you can fight with two at once, but you take away a lot of techniques you can do with one nunchucks. So even though it seems like it would be better because you have two weapons, I personally like one weapon in one hand and then an open hand that I can strike, grapple, uh, pinch, pull, you know, do all kinds of stuff with the other hand and have the weapon in the one hand. And then if I need to be able to put it in the other hand. So yes, you can fight with two bow staffs. You can spin them at the same time, but you limit yourself greatly just because you have two sticks spinning. But it is a good way to train your brain. It's a fun, it's a little bit harder. So anything that's harder is worth doing, right? Pulling up and out with that small side. There's that saying, anything worth doing is worth doing well. And I call BS, I call bunko on that, I say, Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. 
because your ego gets in the way and you think, well, if I can't do it well, I'm not going to do it. You can't do it well. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep trying. You're going to get better as long as you don't quit. Don't be so arrogant to think that anything we're doing is worth doing well. Yes, it is after you start and you're really bad at it. Anything worth doing is worth doing so poorly that everybody laughs at you and you say, I don't care if you laugh at me. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. And you get frustrated and angry and you smack yourself over and over and you smile because you know if you're, if you're paying a heavy price, you're going to get a big reward. It's the easy stuff that has no reward. Now, when you go hand to hand, I'm going to have it pinky to pinky. Think about it. Potato chips, Twinkies, cookies. Nutella on your pancakes, all that, even though they say it's good for you, it's not. It's just but more sugar, right? It's going to make you fat, slow, and dumb. Fried foods, French fries, cheeseburgers, pizza, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, it all goes down so smooth, so easy. There's no barrier. There's Anybody can do it. Everybody can do it, and the reward is a miserable life. Getting clean, fresh vegetables, washing them, cutting them, putting them together in a salad or in a food dish. That takes effort. What's the reward? Better health. Sitting on your bum, watching hours and hours of television and Netflix and YouTube videos. What's the reward? A bigger bum. That's it. What's the reward of getting up and spinning a staff and smacking yourself and learning something new? A smaller bum, a tighter belly, a better grip, more knowledge, more ability to defend yourself. Anything that's difficult to do that causes you physical pain is going to improve. And it's not, that's not that no pain, no gain thing. I'm just saying, pay a bigger price. Ask yourself, what am I doing that's so easy and giving me a miserable life? And then I sit there and moan and groan about my miserable life. Stop doing it. What's the opposite? What's the opposite of sitting on your bum, watching TV, walking, right? Push-ups, sit-ups, spinning a staff. What's the opposite of eating garbage food, eating fresh fruits and vegetables, lean meat, clean, drinking clean water? But I don't like the way it tastes. Get over it. You don't have to eat it for the taste. Eat it because it's good for you. Pay the price. You want the reward, pay the price. Now, what I want you to do here, I'm showing you this in a different plane. You know how to do this. We just did this. This is the forward figure eight. Now I'll do a sideways in the side plane figure eight, but it's still a forward figure eight. And then if you want to, reverse it because we also did the reverse figure eight. And what's going to happen is this is going to start to strengthen the back of that shoulder, your rear deltoid muscle. It's going to get stronger. You're going to get more flexible. You're going to get more capable of defending yourself because you are moving in a new plane. Stomach up and in, abs tight. Do this while you're standing on your feet. Keep your body or your feet just under your body. Sometimes you ask me, what about footwork? Well, on this, on most of them, just stand up. Your body knows what to do. Keep your feet under your shoulders. That's the general rule. About as wide as your shoulders are wide. If it's too wide, that can be a more traditional martial arts stance, right? This can be a nice, good, solid martial arts stance. That'll build strength in your legs. But for the most part, when you're learning self-defense, just don't get too wide. Keep your feet under your body. You'll move faster. You'll be more responsive, able to defend yourself. Now, let's talk about self-defense. I'm going to make this the threat, and I'm going to hit him for self-defense. But I want to show you how and what you're going to do to make that work. I'm going to bring the camera a little closer. Don't get nauseous on me. I apologize for moving it so much, but I'm going to put the stick between me and the threat. This is the first principle of self-defense. First principle of self-defense is always going to be the same. If you're, if you're still getting tendonitis in your elbow, I want you to do these two things. Now you just said that your tennis elbow hurts. You have tendonitis in your elbow and you can't spin as much as you used to. I'm fully familiar with that. Let me give you three things to do. One, I'm not a medical doctor. Let me start by saying that. But if you've ever if you're if you're able to take ibuprofen for swelling, that's going to help 
but there's ibuprofen daily. Don't do that. And there's ibuprofen therapy. If you talk to your doctor, ask how to do that. That's going to help the, th uh, the swelling. Second, but, but don't, don't take my word. I'm not a doctor. I'm not prescribing anything. I'm not prescribing ibuprofen. I'm saying talk to your doctor about it. Second, though, these are things you can do at home. Drinking more water and taking your fingers and doing this. You're going to start to activate the blood. Get the blood into the tendons and the muscles because if this hurts here, you're, it's usually because you're doing too much of this here. It's too much of the um, flexion, right? It's overuse. That's what the doctor will say, overuse. If I, I think, ask the doctor. But you're gonna do this. I'll show you how to do the finger rolls in this workout in just a little bit. But I wanna show you, because if you have tendonitis, it's, a, it's an annoying pain. And it seems like it'll never go away, but trust me, it will. Do that on both hands. Even if you have tendonitis just in one hand, do in the other one so you don't get it. Usually tendonitis is a sign that your body is not in the right posture. Probably you're rolled forward a little bit and you're compensating a lot here instead of back here and your whole body's moving. So check your posture. Make sure your chin's back. Don't do this so much. So start by pulling your shoulders back and down, stomach up and in. Do your fingers. And then... This right here, it's gonna be so tender when you touch it, so touch it lightly, but just go back and forth on it, just up and down, and you'll feel that tight tendon, just up and down, up and down. Start to get blood in there. Blood heals everything, because the oxygen goes through, not a doctor. The oxygen goes through your heart and your lungs, gets into the blood. The blood gets into the tendon as you're doing this. Feels good already and it's gonna to start to alleviate some of the, it's gonna take the edge off for a little bit, it's not gonna stay like that forever, and then ice it, and then use heat and cold, heat and hot and cold, hot and cold, but don't ice it for like 50 minutes, eight minutes at the most. Make sure if it's not just a pure piece of ice, put it in a little baggie, maybe a little bit of water in there so it's nice and soft and it can sit there, let it go numb a little bit, and then warm it up again. You can warm it up, you don't have to use heat or you can take a hot, um, as hot as you can stand, washcloth or something, just put it on there and hold it, and then go back and forth. Do that a couple times in the morning or when you have time at night, but these are going to be extremely beneficial for that, and then this, up and down. Plus the other things I said, you know, talk to your doctor about that. If you wanna to talk to a, a research it, do it, whatever kind of research you want. But almost always, when you have pain, a tendonitis here or here, or in here, the carpal tunnel, it's from your posture being out of whack. You're, you're compensating something, and that's why you're overusing it. Your body knows how to work. If you're doing the spins correctly, you're not gonna get the tendonitis if you have good posture. That's shoulder back and down, stomach up and in. Your chin should be back and down just a little bit, kind of in a natural position. But you have to research your, you know, take a picture of yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror, take a picture of yourself, See where that is. Self-defense, this is the threat. Number one, pay attention. Situational awareness, number two, put the stick between you and the threat. Number three, point your thumb at the stick. That's gonna put your hands in this position. From here, this is my front hand, my left foot's forward. Here comes the threat. I say, hey, back up, you're too close. Sorry guys, I lost you for a second. Every once in a while, YouTube does that to me. I'm gonna point my thumb my thumb goes to the threat that creates distance that puts this piece of the stick, this length of two feet or whatever, between me and the threat. He's got a knife, multiple attackers, more than one person, bigger opponent, doesn't matter. Now I'm going to thrust. That's your first self-defense move with the bow. With the long martial arts staff, when you train, when you start to do bow staff training at home, you're just going to, yeah, the lag is over. You're gonna point the thumb and then extend. Usually I think that lag comes from, you know, a lot of people on the net at once but it's over, so thanks for being patient with me. Push and thrust, push, thrust. This is your first thing, you can practice this in the air. One, when I do it, look and see that I'm turning to lock myself into this attack, into the strike for self-defense by turning this hand over and down in the backhand, over and up, or under and up, however you wanna think about that. But it just locks it, that way, if they're moving in, and I strike him here, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. It's gonna push my body back 
And if I'm not like that, it's going to push the stick back. And they're going to be too close to me. I don't want them to get too close. So I point this, and then I thrust. If it moves me back, I still have the same distance between me and them and that big stick, that big piece of oak, right through their face, right through their eyes, interrupting their line of sight. they got to look around and come in and try to hit me. After this first thrust, you're going to pull it up toward your shoulder. This is my left hand. Left hand to your shoulder and strike. Now this is just this down strike, angular strike, coming from the front hand. You can do it to the temple, neck, arm, ribs, hips, take out the knee. You know, maybe it's that vicious dog trying to maul you or whatever. You just go straight down. So you have this first thrusting motion. Remember to turn over. After that, to your shoulder, strike from here, punching with the back hand. From here, punching with that back hand, coming straight in and across the body. Three striking combination. I always like you to practice in combination when you can. So whether or not you have a back doesn't matter. You're going to stand behind your staff, point the thumb, thrust to your shoulder, strike. From your back hand, punch. Now, is that the one you're going to use for self-defense? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You're going to ask yourself, what are the targets you can remove or destroy? And if the first one, eyesight, or their ability to see you, their ability to breathe through their nose, ability to breathe through their mouth, ability to breathe through their throat permanent, that's the end, right? It doesn't matter. Or you just, this center line, this, this straight in strike. Maybe you go for the solar plexus of the groin. And then from here, if you want to, you can come with that backhand strike and then come down over the top, and then come down over the top here, but I want you to know how to use it for self-defense. It's as simple as this. Put it between you and them, point the thumb, thrust, strike, strike, thrust. However you wanna do it, you can do it backhand thrust. Like this, you can be thrusting here, comes through, thrusting there. They're all legitimate, they're all valuable. And if we, I said I might talk about blocks, so let's talk about them. I'm in this position, my hand position hasn't changed. I did my thrust, strike, strike, bring it down on top. Now all of a sudden the punch is coming straight in to your face. They're, they're hitting you back. You just push straight up. Now, anytime you see a high block, a lot of people assume if they don't have a lot of martial arts experience, and hold on, I'm gonna hop, uh, lift you guys up a little bit. They see this high block and they think it's for an attack that comes over the head. In fact, a lot of uh, martial arts instructors that I've ever met, they understand, that's, that's what they understand. They're they, they don't necessarily have all the information. They don't know where it came from, right? But the idea is that if you cut the body in half, you make a circle, you cut it in half here, anything from here up is a high block. And that if this punch is coming straight in, you use that high block to lift their arm and expose everything. Same is true here. You just did that thrust, all of a sudden you have to push straight up because they're coming in, they're coming so fast, but you're gonna stop them here, and then you're gonna strike after that. Maybe you're gonna pull it across, the attack's coming here. The attack's coming to the other side. You can come from here back to here. You can push straight down. Maybe they're trying to stab you, and you just push down, creating some distance, strike that hand, thrust through the face. So it's super simple. If you practice, and I want you to practice in combination, but start with, pull between you and the threat. Your bow, your jang bong, Korean jang bong, your Chinese gun, whatever it is, your long martial arts staff, your broomstick, your hiking stick, maybe your Eddie Murphy in that first movie. Did you guys see that first movie? Um, they just did the remake, the Eddie Murphy movie. Thank you, I appreciate that. You say you wanna be like me when you grow up? I wanna be like you. Um, coming to America, Coming to America 2 is coming out or it's already out or whatever, but in the first one, Bow staff, this bow staff is 72 inches and I'm standing on thick mats and I squish down a little bit because I weigh so much. But if I stand on the hard floor out there, then I'm just a little taller than the bow. But here I'm about the same height or maybe just a little bit shorter. That's because my body shrunk down. But it's about 72 inches. If you look in the link below, you can see what's the appropriate length of a bow or a long martial arts staff. You're behind your stick, point the thumb, thrust, angular strike, Horizontal strike, vertical strike, 
lifting up strike, thrusting with the backside, block up, block across the body, block back, blocking down. This is also blocking down. Make sure your hands above your head though so that you have both balance and a stronger grip, a, a, a stronger block. You can block also, you'll see this motion in a lot of um, staff martial arts. You'll see this turning motion. And that turning motion is when that punch is coming in, it's, you're just, it's just a quick, fast deflection. One, bam, and then you pop them with the, bam, bring it down on top. So practice those basic strikes, but let's get back to spinning. We were going here, back and forth, and then we did hand to hand, and we did reverse hand to hand. Now I wanna show you how to get into, good afternoon, Wilson, good to see you, talking about more of the spinning in terms of um, freestyle, bow flow, flow martial arts, flow arts themselves, flow arts, whether you're using the staff for fun or for fitness or for fighting, for self-defense, you have to be able to, uh, I'll tell you about the Walking Dead uh, stick. We're talking about who's the actor, the, what's the character's name? First of the name, maybe. Wrist rolls. We're talking about wrist rolls now. You're going to hold it in your right hand. You're going to turn your hand up so your thumb is facing this guy. Open your hand and then let it just roll over the back of that hand. Now, what's going to happen when you first start Morgan? The guy's name is Morgan. <laughs> Sorry, the way my brain works. Morgan from The Walking Dead. We're going to talk about his style of... Oh, welcome Egypt. Yes, I love Egypt and I love the idea of fencing in Egypt. Send me some more information on that. I'd love to see Egyptian fencing. So I'm gonna come here, open that hand. If I go too fast, like what happens is you kind of, it's not, it's not panic, panic's the wrong word. It's not startle. You kind of, you kind of get a little jumpy, right? You're trying to get that hand around fast because you're. You don't want it to fall and hit the floor. It's okay if it hits the floor, as long as you keep picking it up. So what I want you to do is calm yourself. It's like a race car driver. Race car driver, Formula One, they're going into the corner at 100 or 240 miles an hour. They've got to slow down to 170 or one for whatever it is to be able to turn their head and, and make the turn, a 90 degree turn and go this way. If they slow down too much, all the other cars pass them by and they lose. If they don't slow down enough, bam, they run into that wall and it could be the end because they're just traveling too fast. It doesn't matter how, what kind of safety gear they've got. So what they need to do is not panic. They have to learn how to breathe. I want you to breathe, calm down, but don't slow down. You're gonna slow down enough that you don't get past. But, and, and in this case, you're gonna slow down enough that you don't pop your staff and it goes flying or in self-defense, you don't drop it out of fear or anxiety or panic. So you're gonna calm down enough that you stay in control, but don't calm down so much that everything becomes ineffective and you can't perform. So learn how to calm down, calm the nerves, calm the nerves with the breath. You're gonna open the hand, calm the nerves, and see this arm, it stays it, uh, static, it's rigid, doesn't move. Let the staff do the work. The staff is just gonna go over the back of the wrist. At the very end, right about here, your other hand is going to turn, not your other hand, the, the hand that you have it on, is gonna to turn to catch it. So right about here, open and let it roll. Then from there, go the other way and roll it back. So go over to the thumb side, go over the pinky side. Let me show you from this side. So I'm going over the top of the hand and I'm going over the bottom of the hand. Thumb side, it's as simple as that. I, I move that thumb out of the way, open the hand, and then I open the hand to bring it back. And that's all you're doing on the wrist roll. It seems more complex and it's really not. Do that. 30 seconds per hand. And by the way, I want to say thank you to all of you guys who um, are members here who've joined by hitting that link below. Even a 99 cent a month uh, donation as a member really helps me keep this YouTube channel going. And if you're not able to, that's fine too. Just training with me is enough. 
But if you have, I really appreciate helping me keep these lights on literally. I'm gonna go today to Lowe's. I finally have enough money to buy some new lights because it's getting dark in here. I, I had to pay the rent before I could buy the lights. So I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. I had these shirts made too. There's a link below if you want one. Open that hand, bring it back. These are wrist rolls. We're going to talk about finger rolls in a minute. You asked me how to do a continuous finger roll. I'm going to show you that now. After we go back to the figure eight, this is my right hand. I'm making it big to exaggerate the motion so you can see that I'm about to do a wrist roll. So figure eight, when it comes to the opposite side of the body, you're going to do that thumb side, thumb side wrist roll that we just practiced. Figure eight comes to the opposite. This is my right hand when it comes to the left. Wrist roll and then wrist roll on the right. Wrist roll left, wrist roll right. Our virtual dojo is growing. And the reason that's so exciting to me, other than the fact, and it is a fact that during COVID, everything slowed down for martial arts schools, including this one. In fact, I started this school last March. In the second week I was open, I got closed for months with the national shutdown. Everything got shut down for COVID. So I had a, rough, a rocky start. Been living off of debt at this school, which is fine. I don't mind. It's my choice. This is what I want to do. I'm not complaining about it. What I'm saying is I really appreciate the fact that we're growing this channel and that I'm going to be able to do more of these. Hello to Germany again. We have another German here. Zwei Deutsche. Deutsche. I don't know. Are we um, Manner or Frauen? Jungen or Mädchen. Going side to side, coming front and back. So it's just, it's a wrist roll to a wrist roll. Wrist roll, wrist roll. And you can start to do it faster. You can start to move with it. You can take a few steps, come back. One of my favorite things to do is change directions. Change directions, constantly turning my feet. All by doing those wrist rolls. Coming over and over and over and over and over again. Good. Other hand, same thing. Now, then, I'm going nonstop with the finger rolls. Now, there are two ways, two ways. <laughs> there, there are more than two ways. There are three, four, five ways to do finger rolls. But we're gonna do two ways. The first one is going to be that continuous finger roll. Now, this is a heavier staff, and this takes more wrist strength, which is why I love it. I also like doing this with a thicker staff. If you look at the link below, you'll see that some of the red oak bow staffs come in a thicker diameter, like one and a quarter inch. This is exactly one inch, so they're a little bit thicker, and it's a little heavier than this, so it's a great workout, but I've been doing this forever. You can also start with a much thinner staff or a lightweight like rattan. Those are all in the link below, the second link. And what's happening is you're starting to build strength in your wrist. Peter, it's good to see you again. Now, if this is too hard from the start, use the other hand and start to, thank you, Sinjaman, man, I really appreciate that. Start to spin it using the other hand just to keep it from hitting the floor. And you're literally just opening the hand. Now, earlier you said tendonitis in the joint. And I said that's because of too much holding your hand closed and not enough opening your hand. Now there are different ways. This one, I showed you how to do this first. And also this finger rolls allows you to exercise the, flat, the uh, extensors, the muscles to open the hand and the tendons to open the hand. And that's gonna help a lot because it's gonna balance it out. You're not gonna have as much tendonitis when you start to do this in addition to the fingers that I showed you and massaging 
this line right here. So you'll find it'll, it'll be on fire. You'll touch that thing. You'll be, ow. And you say, I can't do it. Do it anyway. Just don't do it hard. Do it nice and gentle. Little circular motions. Just get the blood. You need to get the blood flowing in there. Get the heat up a little bit. Just do that over and over. And just put up with the pain for a few days because the long-term reward, you're either going to suffer with tendonitis for months and months. So some of you have already done that. Or you're going to get rid of it right away. It's going to maybe be a week and it's going to start to feel better by the end of the week through the icing and the, the heat and the cold too. But adding this in, this is now gonna strengthen and balance it. This is just to address the acute pain, the chronic pain. This, well, acute pain, this is to address the chronic pain. This is to fix it. This is the physical therapy, getting those fingers moving around. Now, this is a continuous finger roll. When you do a three finger roll, it's literally going over the back of three fingers. It's like a wrist roll, but when you do it going here, your first three fingers come together and your thumb's going to reach up and grab it. So you're going down. When you get to the last two fingers, you're just going to go over your top three. Your thumb's going to grab it. So we're going to go one, two, three. And this is going to allow you, let me show you from the side. Just hit the camera. It's going to allow you to take it over. One, two, three. Take it over into your grip again. Now, let me show you from this side. One, two, three. You're going to use this kind of finger roll, the three finger roll. And you can do the three finger roll continuously if you want. Once you get to here, you just keep it going. Here, you push with your thumb. You go back down through the fingers. But then the key is that it rolls over the back of those three fingers. You grab it. Then watch. Put it together. Wrist roll, wrist roll. When you come over to the same side of the body, do a finger roll instead of a wrist roll. Do the three finger roll. So from here, wrist roll. Over here, three finger roll. Wrist roll on the opposite side, same side, three finger roll. Wrist roll. And then... Like I said, move forward a little bit, start to turn around a little bit, keep it moving, change directions, do wrist rolls, throw in a finger roll, figure out where the finger roll goes, and then you have new techniques. You can start to do bow style or bow freestyle, bow staff freestyle. When you train, when you're learning bow staff at home, you want to learn how to use your Japanese bow or other martial arts long staff. You do a lot of spinning, and the spinning is not fighting. Spinning is not self-defense. Spinning is solely for strengthening, conditioning, just like a boxer jumping rope. And it's for fun, and it's for artistry. It helps you to express yourself. You'll come up with your own signature spins or your own combinations when you start to do the freestyle. And you'll have all kinds of new things that you can do that no one else can do because you spend a lot of time just mastering the basics. And speaking of the basics, I've got one more set for you. And again, I'm gonna move the camera. Big apologies. Thank you, Singe Man, for joining. Every time you guys click that button below and join, it, I, I, get cho I don't get choked up. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, but I feel, I feel an extreme sense of gratitude. And I say thank you very much. Goodbye, Peter. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. See you in a little bit. Now I'm going to come over the head and I'm just turning out from side to side. And you know what? Stay there. I'm going to get the, I'm going to put this on a stand, put the tripod on a stand because the tripod just doesn't get tall enough without the stand. Cause I want you to see close up and I'm going to have to walk all the way back to the back of the room. Bis später. Danke. In, in Deutsch, how do you say thank you for training with me? Or thank you for listening to me blab my gums, right? Flat my lips. Bispal, yes. See you later. All right, so we're coming out over the head. This is the same warm-up move. But now by doing it over the head, you're starting to strengthen, again, more of the shoulder. Your shoulders are going to get really strong. You're going to fill out your T-shirt. 
It's going to look healthy and fit. After you do that for 30 seconds, put it in the other hand and do this for 30 seconds. And then bringing it from one side out to the other side, which is exactly the same way we warmed up, but we're doing it in a different plane over the head with the elbows straight. Side to side. Then bring it down behind your back. And when you bring it behind your back, your thumb is up. Your other hand is going to come under it and bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it back up. Bring it down. Thumb turns up. Grab it under it. Bring it out. Straight up and over the head. So now you're going behind the back and over the head. This is the helicopter behind the back. And hello, Sid Sam. It's good to see you. Uh, I try, I'm working on shipping your shirt so far. My least expensive option is 128 US dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. I do have your shirt though. I'm going to find a way to get to or get it to you one way or the other, but I'm not going to be able to ship it the ways that I found so far. We'll figure it out though. There's got to be a better option than that, right? Maybe it'll be like parcel post and media. It'll take six months to get there by ship. Be all salty by the time you put it on and faded. Now, over your head, we also have the butterfly spin. And remember the butterfly spin here, just in front of your body? It's the same thing. Yeah, but let me show you, I wanna show you something about that. That's a really good point about the room. So hang on, you know what, why don't you come with me? There's nobody else here today. Yesterday I was doing the one, one video and I had somebody actually come in we were able to, dis to demonstrate a couple of the cane self-defense techniques. This is where the weapons and the equipment are. They're actually in both corners, but let me get this one. And oh, my favorite, my homemade Joe, which is just a dowel rod from the hardware store. And I sanded it really well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining as a member. Is it Vojtech? Over the head, is that your name or is that the name of your business? Now see, this is a shorter staff. The other thing that you can do, if you wanna practice over your head. Oh good, I can't wait to see, uh, to see those. I gotta go over and check out your Patreon. Just had somebody try to come in, but he thought this was the gym. Now, I'm gonna go on my knees, because if you're, you're in your house, you're on lockdown like uh, since AM it's been in Ireland since last March, over a year now. Using a shorter staff or your longer staff, if you have room, you can continue to practice. This is the collie stick. It's even shorter. Now, does it have the same weight? Is it a perfect solution? Absolutely not. Is it better than nothing? A thousand percent yes. Are we going to be stuck inside forever? No. Nothing is permanent. This too shall pass, as it says in the good book. And don't give up. Adjust your training to make it work for you. You can do all of your spins with a shorter staff. And it's going to feel different. It's, and, but then, after that, maybe you practice your Joe staff, your martial arts short staff. And, you pra and, and maybe it's a good thing. The whole story behind the Joe, the martial arts, the uh, middle size stuff, is that in the Musashi books, Musashi series, um, Musashi, the great swordsman, fought another great swordsman or a great uh, uh, martial artist who used a staff. The staff was so long that the, the great staff fighter lost to Musashi, wasn't killed, went back, climbed the mountain, was frustrated, was training, training, and he kept getting his stick caught everywhere. So he finally cut the top of it off. So it's about this long. And he learned how to fight with a Joe and fought Musashi the second time and beat him with a new technique. So maybe you need to think about using the Joe and the bow and get a shorter version while you're stuck at home training inside. And then after 
things open back up again and you can go to the park, train, go back to your bow staff. But find a solution. Don't let, don't let that be a reason not to do it. Let me give you a strengthening exercise. It's gonna help with the tendonitis and it's gonna help, let me kick this out. It's gonna help with your overall grip strength. You're gonna be bending nails. Don't do the nails. I'll do a tutorial. I used to do tutorials for my students on how to bend nails and rip uh, uh, phone books and all that other good stuff. Just because I like the old strongman stuff. Now, this is my long uh, staff. This is the, the six foot. You can see the link below if you want to see how much these cost. This is a regular bow, Japanese bow. Bow staff, by the way, is like saying staff, staff. Bow means staff. So you can see it's, it's long. I'm on my knees because my ceiling is not tall enough to do it while I'm standing. So from here, I'm going to grab at the very end. And if you need to, because your staff is too heavy, choke up a bit. You just heard the ceiling. From here, I'm going to push it straight and then bring it back in. Now, the leverage, this becomes a levered weight. The leverage is going to build strength in my grip. You're gonna get stronger doing this motion. Just going to the side and second, turning to the front and bringing it up. And it's a con very controlled motion. You want control on this motion because you wanna build strength. You also wanna keep your tendons and your joints safe from injury. They're small, slowly here. And then finally, going back and up. So you wanna be strong all the way through each range of motion and either do it for a period of time, 30 seconds each, or if that's too much, 10 seconds or 10 reps or whatever. And then finally, starting out, you're gonna turn it in, clear your head, clear the bag that's behind you, and around. Remember here, I really appreciate it. Actually, since I met you were one of our first members I really appreciate that a lot. Like I said, I'm going to go to your Patreon. I want to become a member there. I want to share the love. But I also want to see what you're doing with the Irish stick fighting. So you do the same thing. And if you guys haven't seen Sensei Emmett's page yet, you've got to go see it. He has interviews with some of the best martial artists in the world. And it's a newer page. It's a newer channel here on YouTube. Sensei Emmett, tell him how to find it. Just type in Sensei Emmett. They're, I think you're the only one in your search box. And go follow him. Go meet some in, really interesting people. All right, so you do that on both sides, and then the final exercise from here, and you want to look at this one. I'm going to look at it. I can watch you and then hit myself at the same time, so I'd rather watch that. I'm going to look, and I'm going to flip it in, and I'm trying to catch it on the very end. Partly, you've got to throw it up a little bit, and I'm going to run into the ceiling, so I'm catching it on the bottom, but you're going to do that about 10 times and all I'm doing is flipping my hand and catching flip and catch You get your kung-fu grip and then do the same thing on the other side use it to stand up if you need to it's been a lot of jumps this week I got back into teaching the acrobatic martial arts to the groups of kids that I'm teaching during the day we're into jumping and jumping, I've lost, I don't know, 12 pounds of body fat this month, I think. I don't know, somewhere around that amount. And it's all from jumping. Jumping is the fastest way to lean your body out. Uh, maybe I'll do a jumping, uh, jumping tutorial. I don't jump as high as I used to, but I can still jump. Anyway, you need to jump to be able to do all the tricks and spins and stuff. And none of that is self-defense, but that's all fun stuff. It all makes your legs stronger so that when you do use self-defense techniques, kicks, punches, whatever, you got wicked knockout power just from jumping. So jumping at the beginning, just a little hop and a little hop and work your way up to it and you'll be really, really strong. Yes, we're back. All right, you guys have been awesome. Please put in the comment section below what else you're working on. And yeah, rope, rope jumping. But here's the thing about rope jumping. And I'm going to get my jump rope because I want to show you this. With rope jumping, almost everybody gets started and then they quit. 
I also teach rope jumping. Not real fancy stuff. I mean, I do the basic footwork and stuff, and I know a whole bunch of different ones. But most people just jump, hop up and down like this. And then they do double unders, which I did not just execute successfully. But the other thing is, if you use a ni nylon rope or a metal rope and you're barefoot, it bites your toes. It just snapped my foot a little bit. But the basic idea, when you start, make it simple. Just do two feet. And then later, you can start to do the fancy footwork where you're going one foot and the other one. But go for 30 seconds. Go for 30 seconds. Or if you're a brand new beginner and you have to do it like this, put it behind you, step over it. See, I got it stuck. Try again. Step over. See how ridiculous this looks? The point is, who cares how it looks? You want to get lean, you want to get strong, you're going to be an amazing jump roper, but at the beginning, you might look like a little kid who doesn't know what they're doing until you can start to look like, just got my toe again, you can start to do all the fancy footwork, you can start to do the double unders, and start to cross over, you can do all that fancy stuff. Work yourself up to that, but start jumping rope. Yeah, but if you get up to 10 minutes a day, you'll be as lean as you ever wanna be. But do it in 30 seconds, not sprints, 30 second blocks. After 30 seconds, rest. I know I have some jump rope workouts on this channel. It's been a couple years, but, but start slow. Stop, get your ego out of the way. Stop thinking you're supposed to be able to do everything really well. And if, again, one more time, I gotta make, make this really clear. If you start out and you look like you're moving your feet, you're moving your arms, your body's getting a workout, you're just not able yet to do it continuously. After you do this a few times, maybe a couple sessions in a row. Then you try to get one jump. You'll smack the back of your head. Try to get a jump. Your timing will be off. It'll go under one foot, not the other one. Oh, and then you'll start to get it. But just stop. You have to stop, yeah. Jump rope is great for footwork. But my point is, so many people don't do these basic things, like push-ups. Push-ups are amazing. But people haven't done pushes for so long or they've never been able to do them right. So they think, you know, I can't do 20 in a row. They really can't even do one yet, but that's okay. Start with one good one, lower your body. Even if you have to drop your body, squeeze your belly and push and focus on the up part or the down part and be consistent and disciplined and do five a day. Don't do 500. Don't try to do a thousand and then fall short and feel like you're some loser, right? Because you didn't do some extreme amount. You gotta reset. And I'm not saying, I'm saying being an underachiever. Anything we're doing is we're doing poorly at first until you can do it really well. Then one day you'll be able to do all the jump rope you want. You'll be able to do all the fancy stuff. You'll start, you'll start like this, like the boxers do. I forgot what I was doing there for a second. You'll see boxers always, they, it's a timing drill. One, two, three, and then they start. And then you'll practice. Two, three, and then you'll start. But don't start there. If you don't know how to do that yet, who cares? It's not for them to work out. You jumping rope is not gonna make anybody else fit. You jumping rope makes you fit. So leave it to that and start with that. You guys have been awesome. Thanks again for you guys who have joined as a member. You click the button below and join. I'm going to be doing more of these and spending more time because I really enjoy this and you guys are making it worth my while. I really appreciate it. Since I am it, I'm going to get the shirt to you. I mailed out some shirts this week. I mailed out the two-piece bow staff and on March 15th, I'm doing a drawing for another martial arts weapon that I'm going to send to a member. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in a little bit.